Hello everyone, in this week's video we're going to be continuing our development of our Operation Husky over here in Command Modern Operations. Now for those of you who might have missed the first one, Operation Husky was the Allied invasion of Sicily in the Second World War. Pretty interesting battle, a lot of kind of new things kind of came out of it. If you remember, the Italians were putting up a pretty interesting defense, and as they, also the Italians and the Germans had just been knocked out of North Africa a little while earlier. So this was kind of the uh, Allied forces' first real let's do it to it into a mainland Europe here, even though they wouldn't really be doing that until they hit up Salerno a little bit further up the thing there. So last time what we've done is we basically started setting up the Axis forces here. And for the most part, the Axis forces are looking pretty darn good. We have ourselves a bunch of uh, soldiers. We have some artillery with overlapping fields of fire being able to hit the beach. We put some mines down here. Uh, one other thing that we did is I'm going to go ahead and switch to ungroup mode here. Popping up here, we have ourselves an Axis airfield with all sorts of good stuff. Something I did not know is there's this beautiful map of Sicily with all the Axis airfields. And I was actually really, really close to getting one of them right. There are actually quite a few of them up this way as well. But again, we're trying to pre prevent scenario creep. So one thing I totally forgot to do last week is I have no anti-aircraft emplacements anywhere protecting the beach. So I said, whoopsies, I should probably fix that because you know how the allies are. So what I did is I said, well, we should probably figure this out. So let's go ahead and see what we have for AAA. So the first thing that's going to happen is you can see I was playing this a little bit earlier. So if I type in 88 millimeter, there's this one 88 millimeter 56 toed gun. I'm pretty sure you know what 88 millimeter that is from World War II, but unfortunately we don't have the classic FLAC 41 or FLAC 36 or FLAC 37. So we're going to have to make do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my own custom AAA site here. I can see we have a little light site and that sounds pretty good. Let's click on it and see what we have to work with here. Uh, let's go up to weapons real fast and this see here. A lot of machine guns, a lot of 37 millimeters. Nope, this will not do. Nope, 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 nope. So let's go ahead and add a new mount. Let's go ahead and uh, find if we can locate that 88 millimeter gun. We'll probably add, oh, I don't know. We'll probably let's call it uh, eight of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, some of you are probably going, wait a minute, can you use that 88? Um, Yeah, I can. So if I click on it, it has an anti-air range, which means it can be used against air targets, which is good. Now, we would never just have an 88. You'd also have some kind of machine guns or something like that. And if I recall correctly, there was a 20 millimeter. It was like a, don't ask me which flak number that one was. But unfortunately, if I type in 20 millimeter, you're going to notice there's tons and tons and tons of 20 millimeters, but there's really not a lot that I can really use in here. So what I'm actually going to do is go with the CPU, Whoop, a CPU 2, I think I went 14.5. Did I click mount or click weapon? Because I've done that about a million times. Let's see, 14.5 millimeter. There we go. I knew I got it wrong. Let's see, CPU 4 quad. I know this is not going to have the same penetrating power as a 20 mil, but it's, it's going to shoot down anything it shoot hits. So I'm not really worried about it. Again, this is War II style airplanes. So now I have myself my new brand new customized site, and it actually has some anti-tank capability, which is actually something we wanted to do. Now the downside, of course, of these uh, this era of anti-aircraft weapons is they're tremendously short range. So as you can see, I will need a lot of these, which means don't put any, or it means just concentrate on the things that actually count. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate them around the things that matter, such as, you know, I have a little coastal artillery battery. It's probably going to be a good time. So I'm going to press shift C. So when I click, it's actually going to give me a duplicate, but I don't like this duplicate. You're probably saying, why? Well, take a look. I've got a lot of ammo for guns I don't have anymore. That doesn't make sense. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into this magazine status here. I'm just going to delete both of these magazines. We're not going to have a backup magazine. Now you're sitting there going, oh no, um, it's not that big a deal. I still have 2,488 rounds. So as far as I'm concerned, kind of a non-issue you there. So holding shift C, I'm going to go ahead and click down here, predict it down in Gala. And you can see I've got myself my little radius here. We have some more coastal batteries. We should probably put some protection there. We got another, obviously this town's going to be fairly well defended as well. Up on this mountain, uh, we have this early artillery piece. So let's go ahead and sucker people into it. We have some artillery down in this valley, plus some pretty high mountains. So we definitely want to put them there. And we come all the way down here. There's another coastal artillery battery. Let's go ahead and pop up this AAA right in that lake there. <laughs> Now, popping up here, uh, we have our little airfield. If we want to make this a viable target for the scenario, we'd have to put a lot of AAA around it. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to prevent the player from even going up this far. Again, this is the other part of the Air Force's job to deal with these guys. We're just going to be dealing with the beach down here. Otherwise, you're going to suffer from tremendous scenario creep, which is going to make things uh, way, 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 way too much work for us. So I'm not going to do that or anything like that. So go ahead and save what we have so far. And uh, now we have to get to the hard parts, which is our research. So let's see here. Operation Husky Order of Battle. Now, this is the bad news. Let's go to the Order of Battle here on Wikipedia. And this is who's involved in the invasion. Ugh. 
So the problem here is we clearly are not going to simulate all these groups. Could we? Yes, but um, unless they're paying me by the hour to go through and label each and every one of these fighters, I don't think so. I've done things like this in the past by mistake. Obviously, a lot of these we are going to need to know because we're going to have to do the 82nd Airborne, kind of like the late night little airborne operation, which didn't work so well. We're going to simulate that, but all we need to know generally is what kind of airplanes are involved and how much of it. Keep in mind when the whatever that's going to be called, when the actual invasion took place, basically Basically what they had done is they struck a pretty wide corridor here. We're going to be attacking a little narrow part of it, so it's unlikely that we're going to have every single resource at our disposal as the other group did. Uh, one thing I am going to do though is I'm going to consolidate these AA batteries into one AA site, because otherwise it's going to be too much work for me again later on. Let's say AAA batteries. Delightful. So let's go ahead and switch teams. I'll uh, we'll pop over to the allies. Oh, oh my, this is where the work starts. So oh, let's see, what do we want to start with? Uh, we have the air side of it, we have the naval side of it, and of course we have the infantry slash cargo side of it. Uh, there's no real good place to start except for uh, like in the naval command right here. Now, unfortunately, this website only has the Eastern Naval Task Force, which pff, that doesn't give us a lot. And it tells us it worked with the British 8th Army, which is okay because they're down here anyway, so they don't really bother us. But it also tells us we're working with the Western Naval Task Force, Force, which consists of one, two, three, four destroyers here, one, two, three, four, five destroyers here. We have the Shark Force, and we have a whole bunch of LSTs, LCIs, LCTs, EIEIOs. So again, that's quite a bit of information here. Uh, what is this? Was an art class uh, minesweeper? Ah, we're going to need those guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the most, 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 all the way at the bottom, the USS Biscayne. Uh, this was the command vessel at the time. So we'll go ahead and pop over here. Again, we're putting together the Allied Forces now. One thing I'm going to do before I start building the Allied Forces, though, is I'm going to limit their operational area. Now, I know this is like one of those, oh no, why would you do that? Uh, you kind of have to, because otherwise, trust me, players will get carried away and come up with extremely bizarre methods to completely bypass all the hard work that you've done. <laughs> so always kind of keep that in mind. Go ahead, now let's put this all off limits, and we'll go ahead and call it that. So I'm going to grab this entire area, which looks pretty good. Reference points, uh, exclusion zones, nah, we want a no navigation zone. Create new, and you can see this is only going to leave us with our critical zone here where there actually is units to shoot at. Uh, no go. Leave it to Montgomery. That's going to be his responsibility over there. We're going to disable the visibility of the reference points. Press save. And now that will prevent the user from being able to operate anywhere else in Sicily, but it won't stop them from operating in Sicily. Kind of, uh, again, we're trying to eliminate that focus creep here. So we're going to go ahead and put this right here. So first things first, I'm going to go pop up this and I'm going to put it on my other monitor so I can see good luck. Looking for the USS Biscayne. Uh, there's a good chance that this is I cannot talk today. This particular ship will probably not exist, but we're going to try it anyway. And it looks like it is not. Oh, I just saw that one real quick. Oh, look at that. We have AVP-10. Perfect. Nice. And we have our command vessel. Excellent. So we're going to grab this one quickly. We're just going to say AVP-11. This is the Biscayne. Uh, poor uh, General Clark is going to be riding around on that sucker, I'm sure. So we have our little command vessel. Uh, distance from the shore here is uh, looking like uh, about 15 nautical miles. He probably was a little bit closer in at the time. But then again, uh, like I said, we want about a 10-mile thing to hit the minefield here. So we're actually almost perfectly placed as far as this unit goes. So this is the L. Oh, look at that. It even has the right picture and everything like that. That's neat. So let's see here. Uh, we're looking for the train. Uh, the train would be things like your fleet tugs and stuff like that. These are the folks who kind of help you out. I don't think any of these are going to be available. I'm going to go ahead and try it anyway. You never know. I uh, had a feeling. Let's do tug. Do we have anything that we could remotely? Oh, well, we've got a couple commercial ocean going tugs we could use here. There's even an armed version, which we could probably utilize. I guess we're going to have to stick with that. And it's kind of what it is. So let's go ahead and call you AT-80. You are the USS Moreno. Press OK on that one. He looks pretty good. We need to have a tug in case we need it. There's also the EVS. So I'm going to go ahead and recreate this one, rename this guy. This is the USS EV. EA. Nice. All right, takes care of the train. Uh, now we need some, let's see here, we have some uh, reinforcements, assault divisions. Uh, we have some escort vessels. These are minesweepers. We desperately need these for this particular mission. So these would be AM, would be the type of ship here. And what do we have here? We have the Oak class, which I believe, I'm just trying to remember. Yes, the Seer is uh, both of those. So we have the exact one, 1944, United States Navy. Sweet. So we'll rename this one real quick. This will be AM112. If he gets blown up, this entire invasion is going to be very, very difficult to pull off. So we have a little Minesweeper divisions. We're supposed to have some PCs also. I think there's something like seven of these. I don't think any of these are actually going to be available, at least not the World War II versions. Oh, well, look at that. Huh. 
Neat. I don't think we have any of the World War II version. Oh, we have the PCE. I think PCE is a little too big for us. That's about the right size, but it does have a radar on board, which is a little sophisticated for that particular time here. I wonder what the Constitution class has here. So, eh, it's got a DECA, which is still pretty nice. Oh, I'm just going to have to work with it. Problem is, if I give the player any sort of radar, they're going to abuse it like crazy, which, eh, why not? So we'll grab the uh, PCE here. There's going to be a little sub chaser. I'm going to move them over here. We'll go ahead and uh, rename this one. Uh, it doesn't matter. PC 161. And we can do something like that. There's a total of seven eighties, two, three, four. So it's going to be plenty. So I'm going to go ahead and take this group real quick, group them up, and we'll call these uh, patrol craft. Patrol craft. The user can decide what they want to do with those. And now we need some submarine chasers as well. So I'll type in SC and I'll see what we have as far as submarine chasers go. And I see the MSC, but that doesn't help us very much. I'll type in chaser. Let's see if we get anything. Well, we have a 19, 1994. Wow, that's a much, much older. So we're probably not going to get lucky with this one. Yeah, we're just going to have to skip that one. But again, that's a really, 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 really tiny vessel. So I'm not worried about it too much. All right, so now we get the fun part. We have to put together our actual uh, ships. So we have, again, a minesweeper here. We'll put them, go ahead and group that real quick. We'll call them minesweepers. That looks pretty good. Now, let's see here. I call it the Biscayne. I went to Moreno. I'll go ahead and grab the Evia, which I believe is pretty... Yeah, they're about 1.5 nautical miles away. It's actually a little extreme. So, again, that would be something along those lines. So, let's go ahead and see what we have here. We have some cruisers. We have some destroyers. We have plenty of landing guns, uh, landing craft guns, landing craft flak. So, we'll go ahead and put together a little cruiser squadron here. So, this is where it's going to get a little bit more difficult. So we have to find ourselves a cruiser that's light from the United States of that particular era. I'm not going to track down the actual one because that's going to be quite a bit of work for us. So we'll kind of keep it simple here. Let's see if a Benson Gleaves, uh, San, Di oh, San Diego, you've been elected. So we'll go ahead and put this one. He'll be part of our cruiser squadron, which we're going to need for fire support. We also have a destroyer squadron, which is usually a group, a group of uh, usually four or five total. So let's see what we got for DD at the time. Benson Cleaves, that's not bad. We got the Fletcher, which is the correct term for a destroyer as far as I'm concerned. Let's get some of the older destroyers there. That looks pretty good right there. It's a 1942 modification, so we'll grab that one. We'll call it DD-404, not found. <laughs> uh, let's see here. We're going to do from 1940. We'll do that one. Looks pretty good. Of course, I'll leave it as is. We'll call it, um, uh, I'll just call it Benson Cleaves or something like that. Do something, one of those. We'll go ahead and duplicate it, duplicate it, duplicate it. So now we have our little load. Helps if you actually put them in a group first. Grab it, press that button, rename. We're going to call this, uh, what was this group called? Uh, this is uh, Cruiser Squad Division 13. Nice. Did I spell that right? I did. Nice. So in addition to Cruiser Division 13, there was also a Destroyer Squadron, which again, we'll keep it kind of simple here. We'll grab ourselves a, a modification of Fletcher. And we'll go ahead and make just a bunch of these. One, two, three, four, five. Again, we don't have to be perfect here. We just have to be fun. Uh, Destroyer Squadron 13. Delightful. All right, so we've got a little cruiser squadron over here. We've got a little destroyer squadron on this side. Uh, we've got the landing craft, but I don't really want to touch them now because the moment I start touching the landing craft, this is going to get chaos. So after the destroyer squadron, uh, we have an escort group, uh, Desron 7, had the Plunkett. Uh, the Plunkett, I think I got to find out what class it was. It was a Gleaves class, which would be one of these. We'll say the nice mod 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 yeah, modification. So we'll give this guy another name. This is the DD Plunkett. Uh, this is uh, 431. So this is actually 431. 431. Cool. So he's going to be the head of that group, and we'll modify his crew a little bit here to make it a little bit more proficient than some of the other groups. So we got that one. We'll go ahead and create another one. Let's see. The Nye block was a, another one. We'll grab one of these. This is the DD. Uh, which one do we have here? This is the 424. I'm not going to get too, too crazy here because it'll be a little bit, like I said, too much work for us. DD421. And of course, we'll do DD423. Rename DD423. And there is our little Discord squadron here. So group that one up. Rename, this is called Desron 7. So we have a little destroyer squadron to help out with the naval artillery stuff. And now we need the other destroyer squadron, and then we should be in pretty good shape as far as escort vessels goes. I believe the Wainwright was a, let's see, it's a Sims. I don't think they're going to give us a Sims, though. I did not think so. So we'll go back to the Khalifs class here. That's kind of a bummer. We'll do it just the older version here. So we'll call this one. This is a DD419. This is the Wainwright. I believe it's W-R-I-G-H-T here. There we go. Nice. We'll go ahead and set the quality of this one a little bit higher also, because again, this is like, you know, the fancy one. So we'll go ahead and create another one. I'll grab that one. Sounds fun. We'll just get that version. Grab that. Rename URDD402. Go ahead and uh, copy that one. This is going to be DD403. Copy. That's going to be DD404. Hey, there he is. And we'll go ahead and copy him one more time into DD405. Delightful. 
Nice. So this will be Desron 8. Okay. Now things are starting to come together. I'm not really a fan of the fact that the Biscayne is just sort of like chilling out here. And it's just got a couple of ocean going tugs. Meanwhile, there's like destroyer squadrons and like everything under the sun. Patrol craft. All that stuff is now ready to rock. So what I'm going to do real quickly is I'm going to pop up here and press the save button because uh, it was a lot of work. And now we have the, uh, we're going to skip the hard part for now. The hard part's going to be the landing forces. I'm probably going to have to say that for next time because I have a feeling it's going to take us a while. But this is a great opportunity to start taking care of the air forces. So we have a couple different places where they actually launched from uh, during the war. Uh, one place they were launching from Iran, which is basically over on that side. Not Iran, Iran, O-R-A-N. Uh, we also had stuff coming out of Tunis and we also had stuff coming out of Crete. Of course, there were other groups as well coming all the way out of Gibraltar, kind of making this uh, kind of long journey, doing its thing and come popping back. Keep in mind, look how far away Iran is. So in this particular place was used mostly for bombers and tactical aircraft. All the regular fighter aircraft basically launched from Crete and Tunis in order to make that a short enough drive. So if you take a look at this measurement in here, this is 180 nautical miles, which means most of the fighters of that era are going to really struggle to have any sort of endurance. And that was a really common problem during the war. And again, we can launch out of Crete down here, which is also going to have a fairly limited range of about 80 nautical miles. So let's go ahead and set up the Air Forces next. Again, I'm going to do a quick save here. We're working pretty hard, so I don't want to lose anything. So this is uh, the airport. Um, of course, in the real world, this is a different airport than it would probably have been during the war. But we're going to kind of work with what we have here. I'm going to type in airfield. Oop, that does not work. The United States does not have special airfields. They're generic. Type in an airfield. Let's see, we're looking at a two runway. They're probably fairly big. Uh, we could sit here with the Control-D real fast and just measure it. Well, let's see here. That is 2.1 nautical miles. That's That's... It's enough. <laughs> it's 4,200, which is plenty. So we want a single unit airfield. It's going to be, let's call it right in there. We'll go ahead and name this one. I'm just kind of centering it. Ooh, apparently I just created a minesweeper. Cancel. Cancel. What did I do? <laughs> apparently I just moved the minesweepers onto the water. Typical. Typical. All right, let's see here. Malta Air Base. Again, that doesn't have a specific name on it, but that's okay. Oh, we're going to scoot over to Tunis now, which is going to be right in here, if my memory serves me correctly. There it is. I'm just going to duplicate the airport. I just need to have a general idea of where it is. Uh, that's pretty cool. And a little up oh, there is right there. This is Tunis AB. And that's going to give us plenty of aircraft to work with. Keep in mind the real engagement, you have the tactical and the heavy bombers kind of work in this part of the island over. Our job is really the kind of the light medium stuff to kind of help us out here. So uh, what do we know as far as aircraft goes? Uh, let's take a look here. So we know as far as the British goes, uh, they have all these bombers, hurricanes, everything under the sun, swordfish bombers. There's also a fleet unit that was uh, helping us out, a little carrier group. We'll deal with them a little later. American units had the 52nd fighter group flying a bunch of Spitfires. Uh, squadrons work fine for me. I know how big a squadron is, so we can have all of that group there. We have a night fighter squadron. Uh, coming down here, we have some Air Cobras in Iran. That's much too far away for us for us to do anything. This group here, I'm sure we can implement. And I think uh, this group right here is going to be a bit of a ride. So I'm probably going to skip that group. So let's go ahead and deal with the first one that we saw, which was the 52nd Fighter Group. So I'm going to come down to Malta, Control F6. And we're going to go ahead and stock this up. So we have three different squadron of Spitfires here. So let's see here. Spitfire, 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 United States. And uh, there we go, 1942. Probably going to be the older version again. I'm not going to look up the actual version. So we have 24. I'm sorry, 24. This particular squadron is the 2ND SQD. So that's going to be the first group. Our second group is going to be the fourth SQD. And our final group is going to be the fifth. So again, like I said, it makes it nice and easier. So that gives us 72 Spitfires to work with, which is excellent. We also have the Bu Fighters, but well, we're going to skip those for now. Around, like I said, is way too far away from us, but Tunis is not terrible. We could use the P-39s, assuming we have access to the P-39. Again, we're working with what little we have to work with here. So let's go over to the database viewer and let's see if we get lucky. Uh, that is definitely not a P-39. <laughs> It'd be kind of funny if it were a P-39, but unfortunately it does not look like we have the one that we're actually going to be able to use here. That's kind of a bummer. So I can try one of these kind of things and see if there's anything old enough that I can use like in its place. Obviously I could do like a P-51 or something like that. It's probably what I'm going to end up doing here. Let's take a look. Uh, I can't, that's right, because it was the F-51. It was the P-51. All right, awesome. So let's go ahead and I'll pop this. Control F6. Let's go ahead and say F-51. Here we go. Oh, it's F-51D too. Woo, that hurts. So National Guard's probably the one we're going to go with here. Obviously, we would prefer to get the older version, but hey, we're working with what we got here. So let's see. We have the 81st Fighter Group. Nope, we have the 350th Fighter Group, which is 345. Ah, uh, it's not so bad. So this is 345th SQD. And then we have the 346. What a convenient thing that, like, they're just off by exactly one number. It makes it much simpler. 
And, and there we go. So that gives us uh, plenty of Mustangs to play with. And of course, we have B-24s and stuff like that, but I'm not going to worry about that. I would assume for this scenario that we were able to put together everybody. So I'm going to grab each squadron. I have two sets of squadrons basically dedicated for just uh, air support. And then the final squadron is going to be responsible for, you know, I'm sorry, the other way around. I have two groups for cap, and I'll have the last squadron be responsible for taking care of dropping bombs. What do we get for a range? Oh my god, it's an 89 mile strike radius. Oh, I don't think I can make this work. Hmm, that's a bummer. Let's go ahead and do some quick measurements here. All right. That's 73. We can make it work. We can make it work. So they're basically going to get there and turn around and run back. But like I was saying earlier, the range was not really at their advantage. That also means we're going to get these little tiny 500 pounders, which is, it's, it's decent, but it's like not going to get us very far. And unfortunately, we do not have quick. Bummer. All right, so popping back over here, this is a Tunis Air Base. I believe the P-51s have a slightly better range. It's 190 nautical miles. Let's hit the F-6 key. Let's see what we can do with these chaps here. So if I want to be uh, just good old-fashioned internal guns long range, what does that do for me? 820 nautical miles. Okay, I can work with that. I feel sorry for that poor pilot that he's going to have to go to the bathroom so bad. We'll grab this three, uh, we'll grab all these groups. We'll equip them with a uh, long range as far as internal guns go. Sounds good. And we'll grab this group and they'll be equipped basically for a close air support kind of stuff. So we'll stick to what they had, long range. What does that get me here? 300 nautical mile strike radius, lovely. I'd rather have a little bit more if I can afford it though, which I can. Ready, done, yes. All right, so that takes care of our air forces. Uh, there was a fleet arm unit. The British, of course, had a nice little fleet ship there, I should say, an aircraft carrier at their disposal to kind of help out. Uh, we could implement that particular aircraft carrier. It was actually one of the ships that got sunk later on, or not sunk, it got shot really, really, really bad. But for this particular scenario, I'm going to leave them out because, like I said, it's going to make things take too long. Now we can deal with the real elephant of the room, and that's going to be the UGG, uh, dealing with the landing craft. So uh, this is the part I'm not looking forward to, but hey, it's part of the fun, right? Put this group here. We got the Biscayne, who's really got to watch himself because uh, he's uh, pretty close to the action at this point. Imagine just how many ships there really were. You know, like this is not nearly as many ships as uh, there were in the actual engagement. But like I said, we're trying to keep that pretty simple. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Just kind of roll on up there and get dealing with all sorts of naval gunfire. Like I said, there's going to be a lot of sparks when we get to that step. So let's deal with the hard part, which is going to be the landing crafts. So the landing craft, I'm not looking forward to this very much because unfortunately there are so many different sizes and types of landing craft we're gonna have to do some assumptions here so let's go ahead and grab one of these standard types of landing craft and see what we can do we're gonna do landing ship tank lst uh, these things were very very common there's so many different types of these i'm just gonna hit from because i'm with the old one we have this good old-fashioned uh, lst3 well, landing ship tank that's gonna work pretty well for us we have the good old-fashioned blanco country here i think this is gonna be the one we're gonna stick to he's got some guns on board which is nice because they're gonna get shot at guaranteed uh, we also have the LST, the LCVP version, which is kind of landing craft vehicle person. I'm uh, just taking a look real quickly, making sure I'm not going insane. So let's go ahead and grab the Blanco Country. Uh, there were a lot of LSTs. Like, I think by the end of the war, there's something like a thousand of them. There's a good picture of it right up there, actually. And basically what they did is it was a really, 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 you can see how it's not very big. These guys are tiny. You basically had a little tank deck and you had a bunch of store decks on the bottom. And what you do is you drive up because it was a flat bottom ship, open up your hatch, and dump everybody out and just wait for the tide to come in again and back up and just go. Like this thing has no draft at all. As a matter of fact, what do they have? A draft of four meters, which is amazing. Well, um, there are a lot of these. So we need to go ahead and design a generic one and then duplicate it multiple times, which is probably going to keep it simple for us. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this guy. I'm going to go up to edit, uh, scenario features and settings. Uh, I already did that. Yay. Look at that. I stay on top of my stuff here. Unit actions, so we're going to go up to edit cargo, and we'll go ahead and take a look. Plenty of stuff to work with. So uh, what are we going to concentrate on? Well, I kind of visualize it like each um, LST is one piece of the puzzle here. So uh, we have tons of cargo capacity. I believe the total capacity, actually, i got to look at this real quick. Total capacity here is 1,000 tons, 1,000 square meters, and up to 150 troops, which is a lot. So we'll try to shrink down an armored group into one smaller one here. So what are we going to have? Well, we're going to have a lot of different things. So let's go ahead and I'll pop down here real quickly. We want some good old-fashioned boring infantry section. Let's see. Um, that's basically what they had at that time. There wasn't a lot of anti-tank weapons that really... They were around, but they weren't nearly as common. So we'll probably do like a three to one. So let's go ahead. That'd be nine to, uh, that'd be nine to three. That would be 12 to three. I like that. Let's do 12 of these. Uh, let's go ahead and grab three of these. And let's see what that does as far as stuff goes. Press OK. Always push the OK button. All right. So what does that do for us? Uh, that means we have 150 men so far. And again, we'll go ahead and pop a bunch of mortars on here too. Like I said, we've got plenty of room. 
Edit cargo. Let's see here. We got some 120s. 120s are pretty big, but usually we want something a little bit tinier. Uh, we got those. We'll go ahead and do a pretty standard group here. Let's press OK. Let's see how close that's getting us. That puts us to 123 with plenty of space. Uh, we want to get some a uh, little bit of stuff in here. Usually a couple trucks and things like that are pretty typical. Again, depending on what kind of invasion. Again, I could go through an entire you know, T, O, and E, but uh, that would take us, like I said, a lifetime to finish. So let's see, we got that. Uh, we could probably do some trucks. Trucks are pretty typical. I wish there was a search box down here. That'd make things so much simpler for us. Let's see here. Trucks, tank, generic, VAB, vehicle. I just want a truck. Just give me a truck, man. There's a truck. Cool. We'll probably do four trucks. Press OK. And that's going to get us very close to being out of space here. I knew that would happen. Move two. Does that get us? No. Can I move one and have one truck? Can I fit a truck? All right, let's do cargo. Let's see what we got here. 143, and we have a truck, so we have, like, you know, it's, it's not too bad. So this is a pretty generic LST, you know, LST-1, <laughs> if you don't want to think of it another way. So this is a pure infantry LST. I'm doing the math real quickly here. They landed many, 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 many divisions. Like, it was basically two armies landed at Sicily. So I'm not going to do the math very quickly here, but let's see here. You got one of these, you got three of these, and then you're going to have another three of those. So that's going to be the minimum of those, but a division is three of those. So you got about that many. And uh, then we got five of those times two. Oh my gosh. So you're talking probably 40, 50,000 total soldiers here. So I'm not going to recreate all that again. Like I said, take a little piece. But let's go ahead and build it anyway. So this one ship holds one company ish. So if we know it's going to be roughly one company, uh, we definitely want to be able to balance out their assault force here as much as we can. So one company, I'm going to press Shift C and click. And notice it's going to hang onto my cargo as well. So now I have two companies. Uh, I'll do LSD, three companies, four companies. All right, so four companies uh, basically is going to make up a battalion here. We have nothing heavy in either any of these, so we can come up here and obviously rename this if we wanted. LST2. Again, this is over for my own sanity. LST3. And of course, come down here, LST4. Delightful. So now I've got these uh, four ready. This is basically a battalion strength. Finger quotes. You can't see my finger quotes, but they're there. So that works pretty well. Unfortunately, one of the things we cannot do is group this and then copy the group and paste it somewhere else. That would be awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, we are going to go ahead and leave this ungrouped. So let's press 9. Oop, I did not mean to group. I'll just press the delete key. Did you like to group? Then not. Oh, yes, yes, please. Cool. So they're broken. So that's going to be one battalion that we're going to land. So now we're going to do is a duplicate it again. And we're going to use this as our second battalion. So we'll call this LST5. Call this LST6. This is going to be LST7. And this is going to be LST8. So now we've got ourselves basically two finger quote battalions of infantry here, which is pretty good. We need one more of those in order to basically have enough that we can, you know, declare it. You know, we've got a regiment kind of a thing going on here. Two, three, four. So we're just going to go rename this. It's going to be LST13. I'll call this LST14. Call this LST15. And we're going to call this LST16. Delightful. Sweet. So this is our infantry component of our invasion forces here. This is a lot of forces here. When these guys go dumping off on the beach, it's just going to be pure chaos, which is what we want. So now we need to consider support units. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and get ourselves some of the other LSTs. Uh, we've been using this particular version for a while just to keep my own sanity here. I'm going to grab the other style of LST, and we're going to make this our tank LST. I'm just going to confirm the fact that they can hold tanks. Let's see here. 1,000, a little more area. Delightful. Let's do it. So we're going to go up to this, edit cargo. Now, ideally, we'd be loading this thing up with things like Sherman tanks and stuff like that. But you don't think, uh, indeed, we do. Look at that. Let's probably put one company of tanks in here. I doubt this thing can hold a company. Wow. <laughs> I'm actually kind of impressed. Oh, it's because this is the LST-512. It's a bigger LST. So um, ugh, I'm kind of nervous of putting, like, uh, let's go up to a battalion. Why not? So go up to edit, we're going to go unit actions, we're going to go pop over here to edit cargo, and we're just going to stack them on. If you're going to let me hold 36, I'm going to use 36. Keep in mind, if we lose this guy, though, this is going to be a bit of a disaster. So that is, oh, ah, let's uh, knock 12 off of it. Whoop, helps if you actually click it when you do that. Remove, press OK. Would you look at that? So this, whew, ah, man. Two of these, and we've, wow, that really is a lot of tanks. It might not feel like it's a lot of tanks, but it actually is. So I'm going to call this LST-100. Again, I'm just making this number up. Let's go ahead and take this one. This is LST-101. We're going to rename this one. This is going to be LST-102. And we'll go ahead and do it one more time and do LST-103. So this is kind of the heavy, 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 don't let these get hit by, oh my god, there's a mine right there. Of course, we can't see that mine, but um, you know what I mean. 
So now I'd like to go ahead and get my support guys. And that's probably going to be the end of uh, as far as what I have for LSTs here. So let's see here. Um, I'm going to go grab the regular LST, the Blanco class that we had from before. And we're basically going to load it up with support units. So I'm not going too, too excessive here. Scenario features. Let's see here. Unit actions. Edit cargo. We'll go ahead and take a look here. Uh, we need guns. So 105s is actually, these are all perfect. L118, those are the new ones. Let's see here. We'll go grab this one real quickly. Uh, we'll make it pretty strong. We'll do that. We'll add an ammo trucks because obviously they're going to need to be able to carry some ammo. What do we got here? Truck engine, truck. Don't we have ammo trucks? Ah, I'll just grab a bunch of trucks because this would be whatever is responsible for moving these things around anyway. Pop that down to there. I'm going to go see how much space this sucked up out of us. Ooh, I, that's the problem with guns is they suck up a lot of space. And we'll also add some organic kind of like anti-aircraft kind of stuff too to help us out here. So what do we have for AAA that is uh, respective of the era? Uh, let's see here. I was hoping for a duster or something like that. Oh, it's, nope, that's not us at all. Let's see here. Actually, it's not too bad. An M3 is, it's more, mm, I'm just trying to think if that's going to be appropriate for this one. Go ahead and uh, do some quick research here. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, definitely not. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, we did not have that yet. We have the M4. Oh, there we go. This really wouldn't be appropriate for the time, but uh, again, we'll be okay with that. I'm just kind of see if there's anything. There's an M2. That's a big mortar. I was really hoping for something else. I think I just saw a priest. Oh, look at that. Self-propelled gun. Nice. Oh, the Stuart Light tank, which isn't bad. Oh, like I said, I'm kind of working with what I have here. What I was really hoping for is something a little bit more triple A E E E. That's a technical term, by the way. And I don't really see anything that is really appropriate for World War II here, which is kind of annoying. I guess I could give them a Sam. Wouldn't that be a <gasps> bazookas? Oh, sweet. I just saw those guys. I guess we're going to add a little squadron bazookas in the support vehicle too. Press OK. And look at, let's see how we did as far as cargo goes. Yeah, more than close enough. So we'll call this LST-50. We'll go ahead and uh, duplicate this a few times. So this is LST-52, LST because I can't click. Grab that one right there. This is LST-51. And we're going to grab LST-53. Delightful. All right, go ahead and save that. So now we have all of our LSTs. Obviously, there's LCIs, LCVPs, and LCGs, LCFs, all sorts of crazy LCCCs. But I don't feel like doing all that minutiae because, like I said, I want to play this at some point. And obviously, we're going to get shot back, and we're going to have to test it. So I'm not going to go too, too crazy as far as a lot of this goes. So looking at the clock, uh, this is right around a half an hour. So I think this will be a pretty good place to stop. Uh, next time, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and give this thing a spin and kind of uh, test it out, see how it kind of works, get a feel for the way the timing goes, adjust all the timing about 30 times. It looks like I accidentally at some point change what time of day it is i hate it when i do that but that's okay all set so um, what we'll do is we'll test it we'll see how it works we'll see how many people we can go to the beach we'll see how much the game lags and then we'll kind of work backwards other than that enjoy